afternoon once again, uh, members. It's a pleasure to present to you uh, the report of the past, the present, and uh, how we are looking at the future. And the future is very bright for the Kenya Healthcare Federation. And as a start, I would urge you, for those of you who are not here during the, um, uh, the presentation by Judy uh, on uh, the Global Compact, really uh, it's a clarion, clarion call for everyone to join in and sign up to that so that uh, we, uh, we, we, we commit to sustainable, uh, um, responsible business. Because that question now is starting more and more to be asked by the key stakeholders. Uh, because everybody uh, believes that health should not be for profit, but it yet it should be responsible uh, business. So something very important so that also we demonstrate our commitment to responsible business in health. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, um, change is indeed the only constant in life, as you know. In the year under review, the following, uh, following the May 27, uh, 2021 AGM, we welcomed a new board of directors led by our ABO chair, Dr. Kanyenje Gakombe, as a chairman. And the following directors held office at the close of the year, and also this is what is reflected in our audited accounts. So we have the chairs, Dr. Gakombe, uh, uh, Dr. Gakombe, uh, then we have uh, Dr. Walla as a vice, she is with us online. Steve Miner, uh, treasurer, with us online. Uh, we have uh, Isaiah Okoth, who has given apologies. We have Daniela uh, Moneni, who has given apologies. We have uh, Mr. Vinod Guptan, who is uh, with us today. Uh, we have uh, Dr. Francis Karanja, who is with us online. Then we have Linus, Dr. Linus Degwa, who is uh, with us today. Uh, Dr. Walter Ombita, Obita, who is with us also here today, and uh, Dr. Anthony Jakadu, who I believe is with us on online. So join me in appreciating KHF's immediate past chair, Dr. Amit Thaka, for his leadership under which the Federation formed stable notable uh, partnerships and that undertook numerous projects that led to the, vib the vibrance of the organization. I'd also like to thank uh, you know, the immediate past uh, board members also who retired at the same time as uh, Dr. Amit, that is Jackie Kitulu, Faith Mwegai, and Joyce Wandere, Wandere, for their service as board directors during the period 2015-2021. And they continue to be active members of uh, the Health Federation. Um, and the leadership and governance as at, at the Kenya Healthcare Federation in 2021, we pulled together uh, on the clarion call to build back better. Indeed, Kenya made tremendous progress in implementing its policies, advocacy agenda projects, uh, partnerships, stakeholder engagements, and capacity building as outlined in the previous strategic plan of 2018-2021. So we really as KHF were very focused on the, that particular uh, strategic plan. But now we are delighted also to let you know that uh, we have formulated a 2022-2026 strategic plan, and which was also shared during the last uh, CEO's forum, and with very clear focus areas, especially on the stakeholder um, engagement, uh, really that is going to you know, uh, be one of our main focus. And you have seen that you, know, you continue to get a lot of, uh, uh, what do you call it, a lot of communications around our engagements, but they have to be very strategic. Uh, we've already signed, uh, we're in the process of analyzing an MOU, with the French Health Healthcare Alliance, and I know a number of uh, member organizations have signed up to join KHF uh, leadership in, uh, in a delegation that will be going to France in September to basically, you know, sign an MOU about, you know, corporate partnerships and engagements and how we can have exchange programs. And they are committed to bringing a delegation from France into Kenya during our next event, uh, big event, which will be in May 2023 and are, which is basically around you know, bringing the region together to really showcase the stuff that we have that will you know, draw in business in, um, investments, health, uh, uh, medical tourism, and so on and so forth. So uh, we want to forge many more of those kind of um, partnerships with the foreign uh, trade missions because until we have that knowledge transfer, ex experiences, uh, transfer of uh, technology, you know, capacity building opportunities, the team that will be going to France, and if you still would like to join us, please, you can still sign up. Uh, the French embassy and the team are still accepting the application, so 
please join us. Uh, it's basically that we'll also have an opportunity to go and uh, do site visits, you know, to see the best practices there. Either it's a hospitals or medical devices manufacturing, pharma manufacturing, uh, and so on and so forth. So technology as well, very important that uh, we go and see and see what, what is it that we can partner and really um, uh, in, improve or, you know, we can benefit or leverage in, in, the, in, in the interest of improved healthcare for our countries. So in the new strategic plan, we, uh, this new strategic plan draws organizations roadmap for the next five years. It includes strategic pillars that will enable KHF to build on its achievements and lessons learned while responding to the ever-changing uh, operational environment. Uh, this new strategic plan developed through in-depth consultations with members, the board and the management is a step forward in our commitment to keeping in pursuit of our mission to champion the interest of our stakeholders through transformational advocacy and support. In this new strategic plan, we shall be guided by the core values of accountability, collaboration, innovation and agility. So we have updated our core values, we have updated our mission, we have updated our vision. So you really, you'll be seeing a lot of that in, in our materials as well. We also managed to restructure the secretariat with clearer defined roles to serve our members best and deliver on the, on the mandate. I'm sure you have been unfortunately overwhelmed by the amount of information we are sharing with you. Uh, but we have a very strong team um, that is uh, behind, pretty young, but very, very, very motivated and very energized and really daring to go and, you know, very innovative ideas. So please help me in uh, really appreciating the team behind the Kenya Health Festival. So our management team, including the committee leads and board members, also benefited from the capacity building forums, including a CAPSA-sponsored week-long training in Ibasha, focused on corporate governance and advocacy. The new strategic plan will institute capacity building forums for the leadership and the secretariat. We'll also see what capacity building um, or, or benefits we can have for the, and other initiatives we can have with the, for our members. For example, I know for the health professionals, associations have requested for a special meeting with, uh, for themselves. So that has been set up for the 25th of uh, August. And it's basically to really deep, you know, deep dive into what it is uh, as professional associations, what is in it for them. Uh, but also what I would also like to reassure is that we're also in discussions with one of the trainers uh, to uh, UNICAF to really give, uh, you know, their the, the promise, uh, or not their promise, they will be able to, to provide up to 75% uh, discount on uh, postgraduate and some of the, I think, basic uh, degrees for members affiliated to the Kenya Healthcare Federation. So you're a member of KHF, your employees will benefit from that discount. If you're, as a business organization, your members will also uh, uh, benefit, and your members' members will also benefit from that 75% disc uh, percent discount. It was too um, good to be true, so we had to have a deep dive with them to understand, first of all, they're recognized by the College of Higher Education or University Education, so that was very important for us to ascertain, and they have partnerships with a couple of uh, universities across, uh, especially in, in, in UK. But we will provide more details as uh, those ones evolve, and we are hoping that on the 25th of August, we will be now uh, sharing, um, we will be now uh, launching the MOU and also telling the professional associations, but also on the 20th, during our next members meeting, which is on the 25th of July, we'll also be telling you more about uh, that opportunity. But currently it is a work in progress but we are progressing very well. So those are the kind of initiatives that we're looking at. Also looking at uh, you know, partnering with our members on, um, on projects. You saw that we hosted together with the uh, Strathmore Business School, the, East Af the, the inaugural East Africa Health uh, Expo 2022, and we are scheduled to hold the next one uh, first, to, first to 6th of May 2023. And those are the kind of collaborations also. I know we have an MOU also with the uh, smart applications. So thank you very much for that. We really need to bring that to life. So there is no limit on to how, what, how we can leverage the membership, either directly with KHF or even among, our, uh, among yourselves. And also we are act, uh, acting as a platform also to connect businesses to yourselves, but also you know, to introduce each other to yourself so that you can be able to 
you know, benefit from the platform that Kenya Healthcare Federation is. In terms of public-private dialogue and advocacy engagement, um, we, we, we really highly, as like Chairman has said, we're really plugged on to what CAPSA is doing. And on Matters Health, uh, we can confirm to you that uh, the Chair, myself, and the Vice Chair are driving the agenda of health at the CAPSA level. And CAPSA does appreciate that indeed, uh, you know, I think we are one of the very bi vibrant sector boards, but also, you know, behind the backdrop of, uh, of, uh, of COVID-19, then also, you know, our visibility has also heightened, and we've had to really step up and fill that uh, particular uh, um, space, because if you don't take your space, then someone else will, yeah? Uh, in terms of PPDs, uh, so while physical meetings were limited in the past year, we uh, quickly adopted the use of technology to support advocacy engagements and public-private dialogues amid, amidst episodes of lockdown and restricted uh, movements. One of the areas that we also need to strengthen, and we're going to strengthen, is our engagement with the, legis uh, with the with parliament, both houses of parliament. And we're trying to see and how can we better engage that at all levels. Uh, of course, we know at the speaker's uh, level, you know, through CAPSA, we are engaged. But then we need to be able to really uh, be on the ground when bills are being formulated, not when, they are, when we're being asked for memorandum of understanding. So when we call you for certain meetings at certain levels with the, uh, with the different groups within either Senate or the National Assembly really would like you to... Uh, to honor that. But I must appreciate also the technical working groups. The committees, they've really done a wonderful job. We're due to have our next uh, ministerial stakeholder forum, so the Secretariat has been in touch with the lead uh, teams within the, you know, the, the six committees that we have just to populate that template that uh, you know, Chair presents to the, to the, to the CS Health in our ministerial stakeholder uh, forum. So really to appreciate you, everyone, for your contribution on matters of public-private dialogue, among others. Uh, so we continue to engage the government, the Ministry of Health, uh, government agencies through hybrid platforms, control and control physical meetings. We had consultative, consultative engagements with the CSO Health, uh, Honorable uh, uh, Mutai Kagwe, where we discussed public-private collaborations in health. In June 2021, the board met with the PS Health, Susan Mochache. I think we need to do a follow-up meeting because one of the challenges she, 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 she posed to us is that uh, we need to engage more. We need to engage more. We need to engage the different uh, 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 of, uh, leadership of the ministry a lot more. We also met with the Director General for Health. And uh, at this step, I want to inform you that we will be having our next CEO's forum. Uh, and I know I'm taking the board by surprise on this one. <laughs> uh, very soon, I think it should be 14th of July, and uh, we have invited the Director General to be our chief guest. Alongside him, we've also requested the CEO of um, NHIF, this, the, the management trustee of uh, the compensation fund, the PCF, as well as the Insurance Regulatory Authority, to join in into that meeting because I mean, following the incident of resolution health or resolution insurance, that is a critical thing. That's a critical pertinent topic that we must discuss in this particular forum. So we're waiting for them to confirm. The letters went in like a week ago, so uh, we will follow up on that. Of course, in the event that uh, we find ourselves alone, as always, we will discuss the topical matters since we are dealing with the sector leaders. Uh, that really need to focus on what are the things that we need to prioritize. Of course, also healthcare financing, and at this stage, also just to let you know, we have a confirmed meeting between um, the NHIF team and the uh, healthcare financing committee um, and the board representatives, uh, Dr. Walter Obita, uh, and Joki is the chair of that committee, on the 5th of July, that's Tuesday next week. So for those of you who are in the Health Financing Committee, please ensure that you participate. And also for the uh, chairs or CEOs of the various organizations, please make sure that your organization is represented. It always helps, as we have seen with the PCF and IRA, when we have someone who's heavily affected and impacted by the topical issue that is under discussion, for them to actually tell their story. So that's very important that we do that. So we also had meetings, of course, with uh, Kas Rashid, several occasions uh, where we discussed, uh, again, matters of 
public-private engagements, in, especially on the area of uh, COVID-19 and how we can uh, collaborate more with the Ministry of Health. And it actually challenged us to propose areas of uh, partnership and collaboration that as private sector we can, we can participate in. Um, so the last uh, ministerial stakeholder forum we held was in March this year, so we hold them every quarter, so the next one is due. Uh, the ministry has been extremely busy, as you have seen, um, uh, you know, from their various engagements. So most probably we will, they've, they've actually responded and told us that you will have, they will let us know when the next date for an MSF is open. So it's likely to be any time within the month of July. Um, and we will let you, we'll give you a, a briefing on how that goes. It's very important to continue to honor, uh, to participate in those MSFs. Because whatever is not resolved within the Ministerial Stakeholder Forum is what gets escalated through KEPSA to the other platforms, whether the cabinet uh, meetings or uh, the presidential run, uh, uh, the president. But the good thing also is that we have very good uh, responses and, um, and uh, action on, on the issues that we, that we raise. But I, so the one for the healthcare financing and resolution health, I think that one we really need to make sure that within the next two months, and I know the chair is uh, on top of it in terms of strategic approach uh, on how beyond you know, the engagements, how else can we have that matter resolved in the, to, for the benefit of the members who are affected. Uh, so we hope in the next two months, at least we should have found some breakthrough in either of the way. But hopefully by on July 14th, we'll get to hear more, yeah? What is also good is that in the meetings with the PCF and uh, the IRA, they actually encouraged us to be inviting them for meetings. We've never done it, but now we will start doing it. Um, also in terms of, uh, I know I'm talking back and forth, but uh, I hope you're following me, is also we, on the matters of pharmaceutical manufacturing. I know it was brought up by the uh, Dr. Um, Bao from the PSK. That also we are engaging, especially at the level of the Ministry of Trade, but more important also very strategic, you know, beyond at, at CAPSA level, how can that be realized and what, what, what needs to be done? I, I will not be able to talk a lot on that because it's still, you know, work in progress. But a lot of, there's a lot of interest, as you all know, in the manufacturing. So we don't approach it in a coordinated manner. In my opinion, it will fall apart. So that's for me as Kenya Healthcare Federation, as KEPSA, we really need to also make sure that uh, we are the forefront of that uh, discussion. So further, we have independently engaged government agencies, uh, as I've said. Um, of course, the most difficult one has been the Kenya Medical Laboratory Technicians and Technologists Board. But I can assure you that we have very strong support from the ministry leadership in terms of you know, the, the pain points. And uh, we see that a lot of those pain pains tend to be managed in one way or another. But uh, we are hoping to, you know, in the next MSF, we will be able to get a more comprehensive feedback on where, where is that at. So for members, I urge you, as you continue to experience this, please, and I know we have some of our members like, uh, you know, Penda Health is very strong in giving us feedback on the pain points. And when we call meetings, they're there. I know for the kidney, for the dialysis topic, you know, people like uh, Africa Health Network, very strong on that. So we encourage you to really, because it's until we have that concrete evidence, that's the only way we can, we can, uh, we can be able to have, uh, we can build a case. And you know, once you have case and facts, then you're able to be listened to. So really, I wish to thank all the members that have been at the forefront. Please continue to share your information. And then what we do at KHF in most of the case, and you know, we, we bundle it together because sometimes also when you follow up on your case as an independent organi organization, you, you know, your voice is just one. But when we bring it together as KHF, and, and I can assure you we do it also at the level of CAPSA, then it becomes a very strong base voice and it, it cannot be ignored. But on the other hand, we have very good will, uh, very good goodwill uh, with the public sector, with the Ministry of Health, and at KEPSA level, at the higher levels as well. Um, so we continue to strive to voice our ideas and concerns in health policy through active participation in public policy engagements by parliament. In the year under review, we have given uh, our feedback on several bills and policies that you've seen. Uh, the Health Act Amendment Bill, very important. That one is on abeyance, so we cannot afford to sleep. Please, I urge each and every one of you to really scrutinize it. 
the business member organizations, your KMA, PSK, KDA, and others, please look at it and make sure that even individually you, you submit, uh, you prepare your memoranda because anything can happen between now and the next and, and the ninth, and the parliament can be recalled to, to look into that. That's number one. Um, number two, also at, uh, at, at our level also, because we are also getting a lot of support from CAPSA legal team, we are also preparing a writer, but it is also your, in, your input that will inform the final document that goes uh, from KHF to the Senate, because now the bill is at Senate level. Yeah. Um, we know, you know the radi radiographer's bill, I'm not sure how that, uh, where it is at now, but we were able to provide our input. And also there was a workshop where we managed to get a representative, and that's another place I'd like to you know, uh, request for your support. We get a lot of uh, you know, meetings being called by the Ministry of Health, different departments at the same time. And our approach is always to, you know, through, to go through the committees. But you find, and uh, understandably so, it's difficult for m most cases for someone to spend more than a day out of their workspace. So it's important that uh, if there is a way within your, you know, those people, those members you have uh, assigned in the different um, committees, when we call on them, they volunteer and go and represent KHF, it will be very, very important. But I must say that with the team that we have in, the, with the technical team that we have within KHF now, we're able to actually have them represent KHF alongside the, uh, what do you call it, alongside the committee member. So at least we have done something that is able to help us sustain that engagement. Because I can tell you, I think, uh, yes, between this week, there were like five of them, yeah? There's already a team which is uh, also standing in for us in, um, in Windsor at the moment. Next week, I think there are three meetings that are happening. And uh, you can imagine there, there's NASCOP, there's, there's ICT, there's everything. So really, your support is very much appreciated. And if you can, if you can manage like ARC, and I must thank Africa Resource uh, um, Center, they seconded uh, uh, technical staff to the care chair for six months, and that really helped us run a program until the conclusion of it. Uh, so it's a call also to our members if you can second the staff to the Kenya Healthcare Federation, really appreciate it. I know Farm Access has done that when we have a special projects running. That is something that we really, really, really appreciate. Because as you realize and appreciate, we run primarily on membership fees, which is not sufficient. But uh, we are very confident also with the team that we have, we will probably, and in partnership with one or two other members, we will start now getting more and more high level, very high value uh, projects that will be able to to see us uh, you know, achieve a lot more and create a lot of uh, capacity within the organization. So um, trade missions, I mentioned, that's going to be a priority for us because then we have to really align ourselves and what is happening in the globe and you know, build on that uh, from a local perspective to build our capacity, technical transfer, uh, skills transfer, and so on and so forth. So we have been with the French trade mission, Australian, the U.S., um, I know Vinod is very strong on the U.S. one. He's our ambassador there um, <laughs> for KHF. Um, and by the way, uh, the other thing is that when some of these communications, and, and I know it's a lot, um, when the trade missions ask us to sign up for something, there's something they're thinking about it, and they, they, they can see the value proposition. That's how the French one came up. And you can see now, you know, when we went and presented, they saw the value the, the KHF brings, and they connected, connected us with the French Healthcare um, Alliance. Now, imagine, you know, that times how many trade missions uh, that there are, and what that will mean to the individual organizations like yourselves, because it means you have an opportunity to have a local technical representation for one of those organizations that may want to, you know, uh, put up, uh, put, uh, uh, put up in Kenya, for example, or a hospital, or you know, academia, and so on and so forth. So opportunities we will be there, but we have to stay engaged. But also it's an uh, image and you know, uh, value proposition for KHF, uh, which we cannot uh, underestimate. So we are looking to expand this portfolio, foster part partnerships with foreign trade missions <coughs> to increase bilateral health partnerships between Kenya and other countries. Partnerships and projects, I'll go this, through this very quickly. So we, during the COVID 2021, we had donation from Stanwick. Uh, we managed to donate uh, PPEs to especially members of the rural 
uh, uh, Rural Hospital Association of Kenya, uh, and also the faith-based organization. Uh, we also you know, were able to work, and this continues, in, albeit in a low scale, for Wills for Life. And uh, following this, um, I'm pleased to say that uh, also, uh, you know, the organization behind this, uh, this is Wills for Life, they're also now members of Kenya Healthcare Federation, and uh, the ambulance provider, which is Flair, or um, yes, under Caitlin, they also just joined Kenya Healthcare Federation because, I mean, and these are some of the things you know. You once you once you work with KHF, once other partners work with KHF, then you know you get to see what kind of uh, value proposition we have, and you know it's at the end of the day, it's just enriching the the port that is within Kenya Healthcare Federation. So in 2021, also we partnered with Malteser International AMREF, and this was sponsored by the, GS, uh, the German government. And this is a project I was telling you that uh, through Africa Resource Center, one of our members, uh, we were able to get a technical person to run with the project until the end of the life of a project. Uh, between 2020 and 2021, in collaboration with the EH, East African Healthcare Federation, and um, so we had a Belinda and Mil, uh, Bill and Melinda Gates funded uh, project that was uh, running across the six countries in the region. And uh, the lead implementer for this uh, was Kenya Healthcare Federation. Um, again, the kind of stuff that we can do. And at this stage, I also want to remind you that in September 28th, 28th to 30th, we have our next East African Healthcare Federation conference, which will be held in Uganda, Kampala. Please plug in so that we can also support uh, the regional federation. By supporting also, you also get your regional networks. I know a lot of your organizations have a footprint within the region, including Uganda. We're trying to, br including Ethiopia, we're, we're also bringing on board uh, DR Congo, courtesy of the World Bank, and also uh, Somalia, so that they can also form their own country federations and also join the East African Healthcare Federation. So we're expecting them to come on, uh, to be present at the at the, what do you call it, at the conference. Yeah, so this project was purely around COVID-19 response and coordinations among other things. And also a lot of training for capacity building for our members. I know some of our members, especially on the laboratory side, benefited from this. In January 2022, now, so this year now, we partnered with the IFC to launch the Africa Medi Medical Equipment Facility. And you, I'm sure you have seen this in, the, in, the, in, in, in our communication. Um, you know, which also followed a two-day capacity training. Um, we are expecting that uh, this will be repeated, uh, the training will be repeated before the end of the year. They're not, we wanted to do it in July, but uh, of course international organizations in view of the fact that uh, we are going into elections, there has been a no fly, you cannot get into, it's, it's for their own, um, you know, their own policies. So we'll probably be doing it much later, around November or thereabouts. So for those of you who would, uh, we will be giving a, a call at the appropriate time for you guys to sign up. So watch out for the information that will come from our secretariat, yeah? In March 2022, we partnered with Medtronic Clubs uh, to hold a high level round table, um, really around partnerships and, and, and uh, uh, as far as non-communicable diseases are concerned and working at the community level. Uh, community level, yeah. So we continue to do a lot of these uh, partnerships. We continue to get engaged, and so on and so forth. So in terms of members' engagement, uh, what is new? This, uh, which was started uh, uh, this year, is the CEOs uh, forum. So we are requesting you to sign up for the next one, and the announcement will be coming in maybe either tomorrow or beginning of next week. In terms of the venue, which will be Serena, it will be a breakfast meeting. The sponsors will be uh, Umbra uh, Flying Doctors, and we are looking for one more sponsor, so please feel free to join in. And the reason we sponsor, we, we look for sponsors is, again, uh, that's for sustainability uh, purposes. So we're looking forward, uh, forward to hosting you all during that. Uh, of course, during the year, you've had a lot of, uh, you remember the heroes, uh, uh, celebration event that we had for in partnership with the uh, uh, Saji Farm and Imperial Life Sciences for Dr. Vijay Maini. Uh, so we're happy to host those kind of events for members as well. Um, 
and then also recently the East Africa Health Expo. And this is very important because, um, and something else that will be coming up very soon is uh, together with the Ministry of Health, or we have Ministry of Health and COG organizing the um, Kenya Health Convention. Um, so during this month, by I think it should be around 17th, 13th through 14th of July. So once the communication comes to us, then we'll be able to share with you guys. So make sure you watch out for that. If you remember, we also did a call out for best practices, submission of best practices. Important that uh, we've got a lot of submissions from private sector and we're looking forward to having those ones celebrated as well. So the, the meeting will also uh, be an awards meeting for the best practices. And I'm hoping that some of our members will be able to win a couple of awards. It, it will be officiated. The plan is to be officiated by His Excellency the President as they mark, you know, uh, look back uh, at the 10 years of uh, devolution, the, you know, the, the achievements and so on and so forth. So very important for us to participate, yeah? Uh, so membership growth, very interesting. You can see that, I hope, uh, yes. So since uh, 2015, we've grown 166 times uh, percent, uh, but I think the biggest growth will come in this year because we have a lot of, uh, one of the things in the strategic plan is also uh, as part of a resource mobilization. Resource mobilization is one, but also we're looking at really, we have not been able to, and that's a challenge we're given by the facilitator of the meet of a strategic plan. We've barely scratched the, the surface of who can be a member of Kenya Healthcare Federation. And I know the board is also looking at also the vetting mechanisms for membership as well. But we expect that with the strategies that we are putting in place, we should be able to see a, a huge growth by the end of uh, by the end of the year. Yeah, and then enhance visibility through communication. Again, you have seen that. Please, when it is too much, tell us. We do get feedback. We appreciate that. And when we get feedback, we we moderate it accordingly. But of course, if it's new news, we will also we we'll always be able to tell you. Yeah. So you can see how in terms of Facebook followers trends from. Uh, last year to now, yeah. Then we have uh, LinkedIn, and I like the figures on LinkedIn because LinkedIn tends to be, I mean, it's, it's perceived, and I think it's very professional. So we are happy that uh, you know this has gone up. Um, this is of course led by our young man uh, Edwin, uh, who has been very instrumental also in taking up the communication piece, and also in terms of fit, uh, Facebook. So if you see anything and toward or anything good. Oh, please give us feedback, we really appreciate it. Yeah? So looking into the future, our advocacy and partnership engagements with government, government agencies, development partners, and individual corporates have significantly m impacted many health policies, health services, and the lives of many Kenyans in the country. In the coming year, we look to expand this engagement and partnership to higher levels that cross, uh, that cross our national borders. Indeed, the COVID-19 pand pandemic demonstrated that cooperation beyond our local borders is necessary for an efficient health system. On behalf of KHF management, uh, on behalf of the chairman and his board, I'd like to express my gratitude to the staff at the secretariat, the KHF members, and all our partners for our unwavering and continued support over the years. Our, our vision to become the leading partnership organization advocating, sorry, leading membership organization advocating for and supporting health in Kenya will only be achieved through our mutual, our, our commit, through your commitment. So thank you very much and I want to take it back to our company secretary, Sharon.